Hi, I'm Wardell Borg with High Spirits Flutes. We've gotten quite a few inquiries about, you know, what, what flute should we buy when it comes to someone that's never played before a beginner flute? Well, the interesting thing about this is that there it really is no such thing as a beginner flute. What I mean by that is a professional, someone that's played for many years, will probably want a smaller flute because they want a different key, they want a different, um, a little higher pitch, uh, a different sound. So when we say a beginner flute, it's a flute that's much easier to learn how to play. And it tends to be flutes that are a little bit shorter because they, the fingering holes, the, 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 big, the hardest thing to do in, 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 for a beginner is to make sure all the holes are closed. Blowing into it, you know, there is technique involved, but it's really just, you're blowing and you're getting a, you're getting a pleasant sound. And that's a good start. But making sure that you're able to close all the fingers. So when you get into longer flutes, you're getting down lower and you're cocking your wrist. It's a little bit harder and you have to focus a little bit more to make sure the holes are closed. But if the, on a short flute, the wrists are relaxed, the fingering holes are closer to your, to your mouth, so you're able to really close the holes nice and easily flat fingered. Because even the slightest opening, and, and for someone who's never played before, they, kind of, they get frustrated because you know, if if even the slightest opening, it makes a weird, weird squeak. And they're going, oh my God, what's going on, you know? So really, you want a flute for someone that's never played before that is easy to close the holes and that tends to be shorter flutes. Uh, children are they're, they're a little bit of a challenge in the sense that they tend to have smaller hands so it also helps with children to have to start with a flute that's a little bit smaller and we, we get questions you know, like well, well you know I've, I've got my granddaughter or my daughter that's six years old and what kind of flute should I buy for her it's tricky we would love to sell her a, a, a little six-year-old to play a flute you know we'd love to see that happening but the truth is what we found through the years to really be successful at playing these instruments it's ideal to be around nine nine or ten years old the reason for that is that one the hands tend to be a little bit bigger and also the focus tends to be a little bit more concentrated now if they've played piano or other instruments before and been trained to do that that's a different story and we certainly had you know, six, seven-year-olds to pick up a flute and they are able to close the holes and play just fine. But for the most part, we found that they've played other instruments before. So if it's something that's never played before and, and a child has never played before at all, I'm, nine years old is about the right time. They have the focus, they have the, the hand size, and this flute is ideal for that. This is in the key of C minor, we call it the Merlin, and <clears throat> there we make flutes that are smaller that actually they're you know shorter I should say but they tend to be more high pitched and really most of us tend to like the lower tones just by nature you know this is it's more soothing and so the key of C is a good place to start especially if you're want to introduce a child to it and you want to hear the squeaking all day long it's like oh my God, I'm sorry I did that <laughs> so this one has a really pleasant tone, and here's his voice. So, the key of C is, an, is a really good instrument. It's a good, it's a good place to start, and it's, um, it's called the Merlin, and it's really, it has a nice tone, but, and the fingering holes are close enough that even small hands, if someone has small hands or children, it's a good start to do it. The next one we recommend would be, it goes a little bit deeper, and it's in the key of B, B minor. And it's a little bit deep, a little bit bigger bore, a little bit longer, not a lot longer, but it's a deeper tone. Again, a nine-year-old with relatively small hands can play this. 
we're just giving you lots of options just so that you can choose. So we're not saying only this flute will work or only that flute will work. We're just giving you a range of options that gives you an idea of what will work for someone who's never played before. Um, the key of B is it's a, it's a wonderful tonal flute. It has a really nice voice and it's very easy to play. It doesn't take a lot of breath. Most of these flutes don't take a lot of breath. It really has more to do with the fingering, making sure that you're able to close them. So the key of B minor would be is also a very good flute for someone that's never played before. The next one would be in the key of A, A minor. It's the deepest flute for someone that's never played before. That, because the bottom line to it is you want them to be successful. You want them to have fun with it, not get frustrated. You know, you want them to just have a good time and, and really want to continue to just play a lot and have fun with it. And here's his voice. <clears throat> the key of A is, as I said, it's a little bit deeper. Uh, quite a few schools use the key, this particular flute for when they introduce the, the, the kids to the flute. Um, again, it's relatively, it's a little bit longer, a little bit longer than a B. Uh, but the fingering holes are still easily accessible, so it makes it pretty simple. Um, and it's, it's a little bit deeper. So again, we're not saying one is better than the other. It's just giving you choices of what you feel the person that you would like to gift this to, or yourself, would be ideal for. The next one is the key of A again, but we call this the spirit flute. Now, the advantage to this is that it doesn't have the fetish, doesn't have the bird. It's an advantage or a disadvantage. The advantage is that it makes the flute quite a bit shorter. This plate is permanent, so it doesn't move. So it's great for backpacking and hiking. And, but the, I don't want to call it disadvantage, but the thing is a lot of people tend to like the, the aesthetics and, the, and the, of the bird, of the flute with the bird on it. And, and I, and I get that because they're, they're really sweet looking and they're, they're, they're basically functional art. This tends to be a little bit more on the practical side. It's got a great voice. It's great for backpacking and hiking for outdoor use. And again, it's in the key of A, but it's shorter than the other A. The other A is, you can see, it's quite a bit shorter. Let me show it to you this way. So because of the fact that it's so short, it fits in a backpack real easily, and it's pretty easy to play, because look how close your, your fingers are. Your, your wrists are relaxed, and close. your fingers are really close to the mouthpiece. Has a really sweet voice. <clears throat> and this one's made out of Spanish cedar. Uh, the other flutes that I was showing are made out of aromatic cedar. So you have basically three keys that we recommend. The key of C, the key of B, and the key of A. The key of A, you have a couple of choices. You've got the traditional flute that I showed you with the bird, or you've got the spirit flute that has a plate. That, those would be that we recommend would be ideal. If someone has played an instrument before, any kind of instrument, whether it's guitar or piano, you have a lot of choices because they are used to playing instruments, they're comfortable with them, so any, anyone that has played an instrument before, you can get an A, a, a deeper flute if you like. But for beginners that have never played before, those are the three flutes that we ideally recommend.